Hey y'all, this is Jason Ray, and well, I'm a dog trainer, and I am so excited to join the YouTube community. I feel like I have a great voice to add to this whole thing when it comes to YouTube and YouTube and dog training stuff. Uh, so I am really excited to be here and join this community. Uh, got a lot of great stuff to share with you uh, about dog training and how that's done and some great content, but first, I am super busy. It's one of the reasons why I haven't done this beforehand. I'm super busy, so I gotta get to training. You guys can come along. So let's roll that super awesome uh, intro. Oh. Yeah, I forgot, I don't have an intro yet. Let's just, let's, let's go train. Tilly is this really beautiful um, sable German Shepherd I got in for board and train. And she's really a fantastic dog. Scared of her own shadow. Literally, I think if she passed gas, she'd be scared of the sound. It's pretty bad. Tilly, come say hi. Tilly, come say hi. This is Tilly. Come here, sweetie pie. Come here. She got some really amazingly cool owners. But, oh, this is a good girl. Huh, this is Well, she's five, six month old. Um, Sable German Shepherd in here for a board and train. We're gonna be working with you today, huh? Huh, we got a lot of work to do. Sure nose up at me. What are you, are you ready to go to work? Okay, let's do it. Okay, so um, I just finished the first steps of teaching Tilly uh, go lay on a mat. Love this drill because one, it's a shaping drill and I'm using a clicker and her dog food and she just, it's, it's a fun game for the dogs. Second is it's one of the most useful things you could teach your dog, which is go chill out on a mat. And dogs actually love this game, the going and off the mat, then back on the mat. Uh, if you make it fun. I mean, no correction here, we're just having a fun game with the dog, and they learn it so fast until they did a great job. Okay, one of the best things about teaching your dog to lay on a mat is that you can get down and just kiss them and they can't, no. Okay, that's actually not why we teach it. You can do that if you want. Oh, ooh, this girl need a bath for sure. It's a great way to calm your dog. Um, I love teaching a dog go to your mat. It really, really helps them with impulse control, makes it fun game. Also, it helps them be better around the house. Ooh, your feet even stink, girl. This was a bad idea. This is not why we do this. <sighs> Even your bed stinks. Get over here. Even your bed stinks. Okay, so, but the point of all of this is to teach a dog to go to a mat. Um, it's just great control and a bunch of other fun stuff. It's a fun dog training game. I mean, that's why we're here. That's why we created this channel, right? Hey, Chili. Huh? Huh? I honestly don't know what my wife is talking about. She tends to give me a hard time because of what she calls my uniform. Now, I do have a flannel on because it's chilly outside, but if you'll notice, I've got my cargoes. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yep, 
that's me. So uh, here's the thing, it tends to be functional because it keeps your upper body warm when it's nice and chilly and your legs are cool for when you do like leash walking and all that other crazy stuff, they don't get all sweaty. I don't see what the issue is. I mean, you guys can comment below, tell me what you think, but for me, I like it. I'm gonna keep doing it. So I got this. Okay, when you see dog food like this, Telltale that it's full of crap is this light colored stuff. Usually that means there's lots of corn or crap in it. We had a client have their dog on this. I think this is like, ben not beneficial, but like Purina. It's really crappy food. So anyway, uh, they switched to Blue Buffalo, which was awesome. But let me show you what we do to dog food like this. If you guys know me, one thing I hate is crappy dog food. So bad for the dog, uh, messes up a lot of dogs. So anyway, got rid of that mess. So when you work with the dog trainer, the one thing you gotta make sure is that their philosophy is right. It's gotta line up with what you wanna achieve with you and your dog. You see, I was taught a long time ago that your philosophy dictates your attitude. And we all know our attitudes dictate our actions. And by those actions, we'll figure out what the results are. And that may sound like some personal development mumbo jumbo, but it actually isn't. It means so much when it comes to animal training. The philosophy at which you train an animal could make or break an animal. I've seen a lot of dogs that could have been great pets, got involved in the wrong training program with the wrong philosophy, and maybe they were super shy and they were really harsh on them and it made them a little aggressive or even more shy. Or it could be the other way around, right? And I'm not pointing in one direction, I'm just giving an example. But the point is, is what we wanna do is base our training on one simple thing. We don't wanna hurt, harm, or intimidate animals. We wanna increase your relationship, the trust, the bond between you and your dog. That's where you'll get the results you want. That's how you're gonna be able to work through behavior problems. I mean, no dog is perfect. No dog just wakes up and goes, oh, all of a sudden, I understand everything that my owner wants me to do, and now I'm gonna be this perfect dog. It doesn't happen because you know what? We can't even do that as humans, as husbands and wives and children and, 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 and all that stuff. We can't be perfect, so we can't expect that of our dogs. Most of you guys understand that. But with us and our philosophy, we just, it's, you know, it's at the core of what we do. It's, it's our passion. It's my passion to teach and educate people to say, look, man, you don't got to hurt these dogs. You don't got to get crazy. They actually want to learn. That's the key. Here's the problem. You speak English or what other language you speak. But again, if you're watching this video, chances are you speak English and the dog speaks dog. There's a gap in between that. And most of the time, what you want to accomplish in that gap is all you have to do is build a bridge. All the behavior problems that you're facing between you and your dog, they're right there in that gap. And once you build a bridge, now you can work on them. Doesn't mean they instantly just poof and go away, but it does give you the ability to work through those problems in a loving way and get the results that you want. So there you go. Remember, one of the key things is philosophy. The dog trainer you're working with has got to have the right philosophy.